Okay, ladies and gentlemen, we've done a lot of work. If we take a look at this, we've done everything. We've done domain, intercept, symmetry, asymptotes, intervals of increase and decrease, intervals of concavity. Now all that's left to do is to put it all together. And what we have is a whole stack of information that we're going to put on to get our sketch. Now, again, a lot of information. Some of it is going to be redundant. Some of it is going to be um, specific. And if we get any that don't jive, that contradict each other, we've made a mistake somewhere. So I don't like to use graph paper because this allows me the ability to change my scale a little bit, move things around when I need to. Um, I think I'm going to make this one because I'm going to want to be able to see some areas here. We'll make that two and I'll bring this out farther. I think the, about the same distance here is negative one. What do you think? A little bit out. Maybe I should make it here just so it looks a little bit better. Okay, it's a little bit better. I'm going to try uh, zooming in a little bit. There we go. Um, I guess I should come up. I'm going to want to know where 1 is. I'm going to want to know where 2 is. I know these values because of uh, remembering some of the values that we got for points and what have you. And uh, there we go. Okay, so let's start off. Domain. The domain is such that x is an element of the real numbers, but x cannot equal negative 1. And so what that means to me, people, is that I better have a graph everywhere. I better have a curve that covers all of this domain except for here. And I know what's happening here. That's a vertical asymptote. So I got a vertical asymptote at x equals negative 1. And everything else should have a curve with it. Intercepts. I know that the point zero, 0, turned up as both my x and y intercept, so that's going to be on my curve. I'll use red for my curve. My asymptote, I know that this asymptote here is an interesting one, and I know that my curve goes like that, and I know my curve goes like that. And I'm making them small because when I go to put this together, I may not be able to actually join up with that. And my, we're just, that's just telling me what's happening as I get close to it. There's my vertical asymptote. Horizontal asymptote. I've got a horizontal asymptote at f of x equals 0. So that's right across here. So that's a horizontal asymptote. f of x equals 0. And it's in both directions. And I think I know. I'm going to look back. And I think I know that it's from below. Yes, I do. And I think that I know that it's from above. Okay. What else do I got? Oh, intervals of increase or decrease. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take any of my max or min points and put them on. Uh, I had a maximum point, a local max, at 1 comma 1 quarter. So let's call that 1 comma 1 quarter. And that was a local max. So that means that it's got to go like this. And again, I make that small, but that's what's basically happening. I had an inflection point. Um, I had an inflection point at 2 and 2 over 9. 2 over 9 is 0 0.22222, so that's less than a quarter. So let's put it roughly here. We'll call it IP for inflection point, and it's 2, 2 over 9. Now i got to make sense of all this, and it's a little bit of an art. Um, I'm actually going to try doing it with pencil so that I'm a little bit freer to uh, flow through. Um, here's a good pencil. So let's see. I have a feeling I'm going to get that. Okay. That makes sense to me. And uh, I can scope that down a little bit more if I want. Bottom line is I don't know exactly where it is. I just know that it looks something like that. And I'm getting a concave down feeling, and I'm getting decreasing. Now let's check my interval chart. My interval chart says that I should be D. 
decreasing from negative infinity to negative 1. And as I go from negative infinity towards negative 1, I am decreasing. And my concavity says that I should be concave down from negative infinity to negative 1. And I am concave down. All right. So the next one, this point in here, well, it kind of makes sense if I kind of come down like that. And it kind of makes sense if I kind of come up like that. And it kind of makes sense. Now, this is an inflection point. So I must be going from concave down here to concave up. Oh, look at that. I'm going to be able to hit that very nicely. That's my inflection point. Make it look like one. Okay, so I go from concave down to concave up. And there's my maximum. And I come down. Now let's check my interval chart. Between negative 1 and 1, I should be increasing. So between negative 1 towards 1, the slope of that tangent is definitely increasing. After 1, the slope of that tangent is decreasing. And forevermore. And that's what that says. So I'm going to be decreasing after 1 to infinity. And I should be increasing all the way to 1. Perfect. Let's look at concavity. This says I should be concave down between negative 1 and 2. So negative 1 and 2 is definitely concave down. I wonder what I should be between negative 1 and 1. Ne it doesn't say anything. It says from negative 1 to 2. So negative 1 to 2. So this entire thing needs to be concave down, and it is. And finally, I should be concave up after 2, and I am. And that is my curve. Well, ladies and gentlemen, that was your first curve sketching example. I hope it worked out. You're going to have a sheet that I'm going to attach to this, um, this upload. It's curve sketching questions. Okay, Here are the answers. And I expect you to work on this this weekend. Have this done, and I'll do an example or two in class, and then we move on to sketching logarithmics. All right, we'll see you soon.